dear, sad news I'm afraid you must hear. Things on the farm have got so slack that all of you must get the sack. Oh, no! Except for Jack, who can help me still, but, but he must be parted from his beloved Jill. Oh, no! Mary, Mary, quite contrary, I'm afraid that you must go. There's no work here for you, my dear, or your pretty maids, all your row. Oh. Georgie Porgy pudding and pie, now is the time to say goodbye. Plenty of time to kiss and play. Pack your bags, you're on your way. <laughs> And little Bo Peep, who lost her sheep, you've now plenty of time to find them. Better go home all on your own, or the wolf and the three pigs might find them. And little Miss Muffet, I'm sorry it's tough, it's time to call it a day. No need for that spider to sit down beside her to frighten the poor girl away. Oh. And little Jack Horner, and little Boy Blue, you're on your way as well. There'll be time by and by to eat that plum pie, so to you both a fond farewell. Bye. Dear Jack, and Jill, I love you still just as I would a daughter. Jack can stay, but Jill, I pray, to the squire's employ. Who bought her? <gasps> now that we are parted, I will soon get the farm back on its feet, and then I will come and fetch you. We will climb to the top of the hill once more, and this time, if we don't fall down, we will wed and live in that lovely cottage in the valley. Oh, it fair breaks my heart to watch these two, <laughs> but there's nothing more that I can do. Off you go, dear, don't let me down. Put on a happy face, not a frown. Come <laughs> oh. oh. <coughs> on, dry those tears. I should be the one crying. I've lost the one I love. You're right, Jack. I'm all wet. <laughs> we'll find a way to keep out of debt. I've never been one to shirk. I'll, I'll have to find some part-time work. Oh yay! Oh yay! Oh yay! Five o'clock and all is well, except to the village school. They need a new teacher for that unruly lot, and she mustn't be a fool. Oh yay! Oh yay! Oh yay! See, Mother Goose, every cloud has a silver lining. This could be the job to help us get money to keep the farm going. Just when you think you're out and out, fate lends a hand, of that, no doubt. So, off to school to get that job and deal with that unruly mob.
out there gave me quite a scare. I've had to take this extra job in pantomime to earn a bit of overtime. But they said I've got to speak in rhyme. Mother Goose does it all the time. But it's only to help our writers write. Otherwise we wouldn't have had a show tonight. But then they go and make a rhyme like Muffin and Tuffin. Oh! Oh. So I'm not going to speak in rhyme. But I will make sure of one thing, that you lot cheer the goodies and boo the baddies. Can any of you cheer? Wait a minute, I know, I know there's some special people out there. Have we got some people from acquiring Luton, St Andrews? <laughs> yeah. 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 Present? Yes, are they here? Yeah. Well, let's hear you cheer then, come on. Yeah. Yes, all right, there's a few here. Jolly good. <laughs> now, I bet we've got lots of mums and dads of the cast here tonight, haven't we? I know that we've got the Nevilles. I know that we've got the Wigglies, but I bet there's lots more. So can I have a cheer from all the mums and dads, and thank you ever so much for letting us all come along and rehearse and do the paint tonight. From the mums and dads then. Right! Yes, I thought it might be a cute <laughs> That was this afternoon's lot, wasn't it? Um, oh yes, Norma's mum's here. Norma's mum's been five times. You know, she's found out about us by now. Because he keeps coming back from all. Right on the back. <laughs> Welcome Norma and friends. Well done. Lovely to have you here. Now, you can cheer, but can you boo and hiss? Because there's an awful lot of people to boo and hiss at in this pantomime. They come on with their hair all slip down. You'll recognise them. You really give them some welly. Let's hear a big boo. A boo from this side and a hiss from this side. One, two, three. <laughs> You have lots of practice. Anyway, I'm off to the county I'm glad I've got this job, rather than teaching at the school. Oh, dear, poor woman. Oh, yay! Oh, yay! Yeah, I'm ready. Are you
is a comely wench you are hired from Mother Goose. I think I should like to get to know her better. Now, now, my young sir, she's but a cleaning maid. I have greater expectations for you. A lady of good taste and refinement you're going to marry. Marriage? Who said anything about marriage, father? Why, yeah. we have the family honour to consider, sir. I'll have no hanky-panky in this household. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now then, young Jill, turn round and give me a kiss. Sir, unhand me at once. My heart belongs only to Jack. He can have your heart. I'll have the rest. <laughs> I am the squire's son. Nobody turns me down. Well, I do. Let go of me or I'll scream. Curse it. Saved by the bell. <laughs> but don't think you will escape for long. Go and answer the door. <laughs> Who's at the door?
I'll have some lavender. You always were a kind girl, Jill. Now listen, when you see your young man, Jack, tomorrow... Don't you know, isn't it? <coughs> my second sight. Now listen, for time is short. When Jack goes to market tomorrow, he must buy the large goose from the old lady there. But why? Mother Goose and Jack are already poor, and they sold all the annuals. I can tell you no more. And now I must go. Goodbye, my dear, and good fortune go with you.
messing about, we'll never make a proper job. You mark my words, we'll come to a sticky end. <laughs>
and paste. <laughs> you mean haste and paste. I'm <laughs> stuck with you. Oh, you. Now listen, I've been talking to Aunt Tabitha. Oh, not Aunt Tabitha, the kind old lady. Yeah, she's ever so sweet. So is a fruitcake. <laughs> <laughs> she said she had a dream last night. I knew that cheese was off. She said you would be going on a journey. Well, I've been saving for ten years, and I've nearly enough air miles to pay for a taxi to Luton Airport. Oh. <laughs> Will you listen to me? He said you will be going to market tomorrow. Well, that's not going to get a five-minute spot on TV AM. I've been going to market every Monday since I was that high. She said when you get to market, there will be a goose that is bigger and fatter and plumper than all the rest. And if you buy it, it will bring us great fortune. Ooh, that's the sort of dream I can get to life. What happens next? Aunt Tabitha said, what happened next? Shrouded in a fog of mystery. Even she, with all her mystical powers, was unable to see through. Boy, <laughs> she woke up. <laughs> Well, next time, give her an extra model on with her cocoa. Then we can get the next episode. <laughs> Will you stop your joking around? You know our tablet dreams <coughs> always come true. Always? Name one. Uh, well, um, she did predict that the best thing on TV would be teenage mutant hero geese. <laughs> <laughs> that there'd be a major change in the government. A major change. <laughs> Don't they the straight right. <laughs> Yeah. 
phone and tell me where the old lady is who has a goose for sale? To market, to market, to buy back here. Home again, home again, jig, to jig. To market, to market, to buy for that hog. Home again, home again, jog, to jog. It's not a pig or a hog I'm after. It's a goose I've come to buy. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. All play and no work makes Jack a mere toy. To market, to market, to buy back here. Thank you, Mary. Do you know where the lady is and the girls I must buy? Oh, yes, Jack. Over there, by the school. Over where? Over there.
about the leopards that kept trying to escape from the zoo. He was always spotted. <laughs> well, none of your moaning and groaning. Can any one of you do any better? Does anybody here know any jokes? Yeah. Somebody come up here and let's hear your jokes. See who see who can tell us what the is. Knock, knock. Who's there? Gran. Gran who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Gran. Who? Who's there? Gran who? Who's there? Gran who? Well done.
awake? I suppose that Jack is still asleep and I shall have to make my own morning cup of tea and half a slice of toast. I can't afford bacon and egg, let alone a Sunday roast. Oh, I don't know. We could have a slap-up meal this Sunday. <laughs> oh, don't be so wicked. Why don't you take Priscilla out for a walk? The fresh air will do her good. But don't go too far now. Just up to Malton Wood. <laughs> but I can't control her. She won't go where I tell her. Of course she will. She'll be putty in your hands. <laughs> I said putty, dear, not patty. <laughs> Now to do the housework. Woman's work is never done. Look that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my gate made. Now for the other one. You know, I shall have to watch Priscilla with Jack. He makes her very jumpy. Now what's that bird done to this bed? She's made it go all lumpy. She's got to lay the little egg. Oh, bless her little beak. I think I'll have this one for my tea, on the quiet, so to speak. Mercy me, this lack of food has made me go all weak. This egg is mighty heavy. <laughs> now my corset sprung a leak. <laughs> now, I am just a country girl, but, but knock me out stone cold. If this goose has not just laid an egg that's made from the finest gold. Really? Jack! Jack! Quick, quick, come back! The goose has laid an egg! The goose has laid an egg! Jack! <coughs> so, the goose has laid an yes. egg? Yes! But you haven't even laid the table. Where's my breakfast? How can you even think of food at a time like this? The goose has laid a golden egg! We're rich! We're rich! We're rich! <laughs> you have finally flipped, haven't you? Here, yeah, let me take that. Yes. Do you know, for once, I think you're right. Right. Now, take this egg straight into town without any more delay. Find two honest brokers and see what they will pay. Get the best price that you can. You'll have to bargain hard. Who knows, we may yet earn enough to afford the Barclay card. <laughs> Don't worry, I want to get enough money to give everyone their jobs back yes. and to rescue Jill from the clutches of Sir Jasper and Master Brasper. <laughs> when times were hard, but not anymore. What do you mean, not anymore? It's a secret. Goodbye, Jill. A secret? A young man? What's it? <laughs> <laughs> this boy kid with clothes on, like young Jack, who don't really have anything to report to the squire's son. But who is this? 
Jack. None other than young Jack. Excuse me, but you seem to be two reputable gentlemen. Good <laughs> <laughs> naive young fool. <laughs> yes, sir. How may we help you? Well, I have this golden egg for sale. And I know you will give me a fair price. The golden eggs are fairly common at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Two a penny. Oh. Well, how much will you give me then? Two pounds. Oh, that's not very much. Well, seeing as it's you, and you're a nice young gentleman, one fifty. <laughs> oh, good. Here you are. <laughs> now, to, now to rescue Jill. from my father's employee. Of course he will. I will always trust Jack. Sir, sir, I have the money. Well, let me see the colour of it. One pound fifty? <laughs> One pound fifty? That's not enough, am <laughs> Oh, don't cry, Jill. I'll try again. I'll be back, I promise. Yeah, well, <laughs> and he's taken my one pound fifty. <laughs> Oh, 
my daughters get ready for bed soon. I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> I tell you, I knew Priscilla wouldn't let us down. 
Now, a quick breakfast and then off to town to sell this egg and do much better. And uh, make us rich and then you and Jill can get hitched. Dear Mother Goose, <laughs> you're always right. How could I have doubted Priscilla? Come on, Priscilla. Corn for you, shred is for me, then off to town. <laughs> Tabitha. We've all heard about your predictions, but do any of them ever come true? Of course they do. Well, tell us about one of them.
that side, please. No, no, we're going to win. I'll tell you what, you lot go off for a picnic, and this lot can sing as loud as they like. Sing without them. Without them. Can you do it without the children, do you think? Yeah. yeah. All right, then. We'll keep these words here, but the children can go. <laughs> Back. 
I I could pay you quite a whack. Ah. <laughs> well then, now that you're my good and wealthy neighbor, it would give me enormous pleasure to return it to you. Of course. Oh. No extra cost. Oh. As a gesture of uh, goodwill. Oh, thank you, sir. Jasper to you, madam. <laughs> Jasper, well, you can call me Deary. <laughs> well, uh, Deary. <laughs> I'll send for Pickerton Pocket to return your heirloom today. And finally, I would like to extend my home and hospitality to Jack and Joe when they get wed, which can't be too long into the future. Ah, <laughs> oh, give me a happy ending every time. It's the only way in pantomime. But there's one thing still bothers me. Who those burglars could be? <laughs>
I'll ask my friends to speak in rhyme. Now all our friends have work again. Without Jack and Priscilla, it would have all been in vain. So let's raise the top of Morden Village Hall and join in our finale. Sing one and all. <laughs> Painting for us, 
and those magicians who run around when you don't see them and transform it from one scene to another in a split second. We even had a school bill, which was marvellous. They can't be built that easy nowadays. Thank you very much. All those behind us. colourful and more attractive and they keep letting them out. <laughs> they keep fitting. So thank you to all the people who helped with the costumes. <laughs> my surprise, you know, I did mention it earlier, and the writers have done a tremendous job this year. And thank you very much for that. And I won't get those particularly applauded because we'll bring them Mike up to take his bow in a moment. But if I could uh, just ask the young lady to thank the, uh, the producers who pull us all together, keep it all on the road. And our producers happen to be our leading company, Jack and Jill. Quite amazing, isn't it? They do all the singing, all the acting, and produce it all as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. the nomination for Director of the Year. So Mike, if you could join us, please. Mr. Mike Talk, who is not only chairman and writer and director, but also keeps telling us to... Mike, you have to sing this time. Oh, go on. <laughs> 